Hi folks, it's me Ali again, sharing with you the rest of the story. After returning from the beautiful city of Vienna and the ESC meeting, I spent a couple of days back home in Boston, but turned around and went directly to Montreal to present at the Canadian Academy of Endodontists, which was being held this year in the beautiful resort of Mont Tremblant. And I'm just gonna have a little excerpt about CBCT technology. Now, as you know, I, uh, about a year or so ago, I got a new unit, a CBCT unit, the, the Veraview X800 for the office. And I said to you guys that I was gonna make some videos on it and uh, kind of been incorporated in some of the cases that I have done. But I just want to talk about the machine itself today, just briefly, because it really has been amazing. Now, I've been using CBCT technology since 2008. So, and also more importantly, the reason I bought the unit was because I didn't want to charge the patients when I'm taking a, uh, uh, taking a CVCT. And the reason for that is because I've always thought that the image is helping me. I've never charged my patients for using the microscope, frankly, because it helps me see better. And uh, I feel the same way about the CVCT. But still, CVCTs are extremely helpful, especially in cases of triaging and treatment planning for surgery versus revision, you know, non-surgical retreatment versus uh, a surgery is, is, is incredibly helpful. Also, you get some information about the canal anatomy that is extremely helpful too, such as whether there is an, an MB2 in this particular case, or there is no MB2. If there is an MB2, does it join? If it's calcified, is it wide? Is it not? Um, so lots of different applications there. Uh, this uh, very view is, is is great. I'm just going to share a case uh, from just the, uh, you know, not too long ago here. And it was this, this uh, um, essentially this, this second molar that, as you can see under a crown, the crown had just been cemented. The patient ended up having a wrist pulpitis. The patient came in late in the afternoon on a Friday to do the emergency treatment to get uh, him out of pain. But, um, and we just figured we'll take a CBC to just see what kind of anatomy we have so we can do the treatment. And I just wanted to kind of showcase that, you know, how long it takes to take a CT image once your assistant, your staff gets pretty fast at it. In this particular unit, the X800, uh, go up and down. This patient was pretty tall, so we ended up having him sit down. Uh, the key with taking these images is to have a patient that is completely still. What's nice about this particular X800 is that it allows you to take a very high quality pan to begin with, and then the assistant will scout the image to the location where you want to take it, and then it can almost do an auto exposure and take an additional rotation. It takes a little bit longer, but it'll give you much higher resolution. And you can see in just a few minutes, you've already had the image that pops up on the screen, and now it allows us to quickly, before we get in there and do our procedure, take a look at the image, and I always try to get things aligned, and we can talk about that. I'll probably have a whole video on looking at CBCTs and interpretation. But I always like to look at the axial section first, and you can see here we're having two canals in the mesial and one canal on the distal. The two mesial canals tend to join the apical third, looking at the anatomy, and you can see here from the coronal section on the left side that we do have some type of webbing going on towards the apical area, but the, the canals do join. And from the uh, sagittal section on the lower right, you can see that uh, you know the canals are fairly straightforward and so on. We can see the mental foramen uh, in relation to the apical area. And uh, you know the fact that, uh, look here again on the left side from the coronal section, the, the, the convergence of the roots. Now you could make the argument that, look, this is information we can find clinically. But again, in this particular case, it may not be all that helpful. I want more to demonstrate the, how long does it take to take an image and then move on to interpret. But now I'm gonna show you also the case itself. As usual, we always start from a preclinical um, PA radiograph from which we make our uh, estimated working length and then make an axis preparation through this uh, zirconia crown with our DuraCut uh, burrs from the real dendro axis kit. And now you can see the axis preparation. And you can see the post-op here is a pretty conventional type of a case. You have canal joining, but that information I had in advance, I quickly knew where to look for for the case, for the, for the canals and how to treat, get to the large enough apical diameter and get things done. So this kind of shows us the power of the information that we gain from CBCTs. Of course, at the same time, we have the Alara uh, type of principles in terms of trying to reduce the exposure to the patient. But at the same time, we know that some of these modern CTs, because of the resolution of the sensors and the focal cone uh, radiation being very, um, very much limited and concentrated, <clears throat> we're not getting uh, too much um, scatter and that it is as, as much as possible, it's as safe as possible for the patient and 